So my man Chris reached out to me on YouTube, wanted to know a little more about the parts I'm using in some of my sled tip videos, uh, the replacement parts, what brand they are, and what kind of luck I've had. So I'm going to go over some of that with you guys today, and then if you stick around to the end, I'm going to give you a bunch of part numbers that I've accumulated over the years, OEM part numbers to help me cross-reference different things that I'm buying to do clutch rebuilds and things of that nature. So. Stay tuned. When it comes to most of my Articat clutch rebuild videos, the aftermarket parts I am using are mostly SPI. Now, you can still find some of these items from Articat not very many and when when you do i find that they're terrible expensive to pick on one specific example so if i'm replacing the the rollers in a six tower wide pin articat clutch i'm using spi pins and rollers spi washers the whole kit from spi why if you go on to cat they do not reference a repair kit part number um, for those pieces, the, the pins, the rollers, the washers, they don't give you part numbers for any of those on. Um, I've looked on Country Cat, I've looked on Articat Parts House. I had to do some, some digging and then just description searching to find the, the kits that I found. I buy most of those kits on eBay. Uh, I found one guy, I think it's John's Power Sports out of Minnesota. So for me, pretty quick shipping and has a lot of this stuff in stock. But anyway, SPI, some people will say that's a terrible brand. Honestly, I, we're racing these machines, a lot of these machines. I do find that the washers don't always last very long. Seems like we'll wear through those fast so your roller will start moving on the pin which you don't want either. But another part of that is the, the parts are inexpensive and it forces us to check our clutches once in a while. So last year, you know, for example, my 600 proof stock, I think I rebuilt that clutch for sure two different times. Two different times I wore through the, the washers and the pin, or the roller was starting to, to slide into the spider, which you don't want because you don't want to lock up a roller, it ruins, well, it ruins the roller, ruins the fiber bearing inside of the roller specifically, and it can ruin your weight and it can ruin the whole clutch. So yeah, SPI might not be the top notch brand, but I've had pretty good luck with them. So when it comes to specifically weight rollers or the rollers and the spider, that I'm typically using SPI. When it comes to cam arm kits, now this is where I start blurring the lines a little bit. I've, I've gotten some knockoff stuff, some no name stuff. I find, especially if we're talking about like an 04 six tower wide pin, where they got the O-rings on either side to center the weight on the roller. With the cheap kits, I found the O-rings don't last at all. I've tried hacks in years, years past of doing some washers on either side and this and that, and it gets a little hokey and I don't really like it. Now, as far as if you back up a year, the 036 tower, that's still the narrow pin style, which mimics the nine tower. Um, that's still a pin, that's still a weight that, that spins freely on the pin. Those kits I bought from, I don't know, probably guys who found the exact hardware at their local hardware store and threw the kits together and sold them on eBay. I've had decent luck with those. Uh, if you can get the, if you get the one washer, I don't know, I wrote on my dry erase board with a permanent marker, but they got a washer somewhat shaped like that. As long as they got that washer, it uh, makes it easier to put the replacement kit in. 
So I guess long or the short is if we're talking the either the late nine towers or any nine tower for that matter and the early six towers with the narrow pin, the cam arm kits are what they are. Now the main thing with those two clutches I just described, the early six tower and the nine towers are the fiber bushings inside of the weight. Those are something you wanna make sure you're getting a quality bushing, bearing, whatever. Everybody calls it something different. It's a fiber bearing. You can still get those direct from CAT and typically I will. They're not that expensive and I just haven't found or taken the time to find the direct replacement cheaper. What I recommend everybody do whenever they're starting to either have issues or try to get ahead of any clutching issues is just go through my sled tip videos that show you how to take them off, I show you how to take them apart, um, clean them, show you how to put them back together, and I believe they all show you how to put them back on too and what the torque specs and etc. Go through those videos, go through your clutches, take them apart, clean them up, rebuild them back to basic condition. By basic condition, I mean how did that thing come off the line in the factory? Get everything set to factory settings. We've had our best luck by just starting at a factory, setting the baseline that way, and making very minor adjustments from there. You'd be surprised how much just getting everything shifting efficiently and effectively will improve the performance of your machine. It's tremendous. You know, obviously rollers, making sure those aren't locked up, pins and weights are centered and separated and, and uh, you know, your, your rubber O-rings in place or your metal O-rings aren't shot, stuff isn't sliding into the side of the, uh, the sheaves, your clutch offsets, when you mount your clutches, that kind of stuff all plays into this. If, if you can get stuff set to how it's supposed to be, you know, correct belt lengths, um, you know, OEM cap belts if possible. We actually run Daco's on all our race stuff, so had good luck with Daco's, that's another one you can just cross-reference the number, you get the right, the right width, the right uh, circumference, and haven't had any issues that way. Other things to think about and look at, so when we're talking primary clutches, you have a movable sheave that's got a fiber bushing in it, um, and your cap will also have a fiber bushing in it. The guys who, to be honest with you, I haven't bought a lot of their stuff yet, but I've been watching it really close and trying to talk to people that do run their stuff, but Thunder products or Thunder Shift products, they make some cool stuff and they sell those fiber bushings. I haven't been able to find those fiber bushings anywhere. You go on Cats, Microfish, they don't give, they don't show them in the breakdown. They don't give you a part number for them. The old nine towers, I think, might. Now, whether or not they'd be the exact same, a guy would have to just look. That's an idea. Um, but no, Thunder products or Thunder Shift products, they sell some weights I'm gonna try. We're, I'm gonna hopefully, if time allows, get some twin pipes set up on my 600 improved stock. At that point, I'm gonna go to their Thundershift kit, fully adjustable weight. I like how they put right, right on the site. I've already downloaded it, read it through it many times, and I haven't even bought the product yet. They put their clutch tuning information right on the web. Anybody can download it. I like that, I like to be able to read up on what I'm gonna buy before I buy it. Talk to a lot of people that have had a lot of success with them and I just think for what I'm gonna be doing with that machine, that ultimate tunability is gonna be important. Now, that sounds counterintuitive to what I just told you about bringing, the, the, uh, bringing your clutching back to basic condition. You have any sort of issue with how your machine runs, rides, any of that. If you look under your clutch cover and something or anything doesn't match factory spec, tear it off, tear it all apart, replace it with factory spec, 
Start at a baseline, work from there. The easiest way is just put the factory spec items in the clutch. Um, from there, so we talked about fiber bushings, Thunder products, check those guys out. Your secondaries, now your secondaries got a, it's not a fiber bearing, it's almost looks like a brass or a copper, but what I've figured out is they're actually, they're just a Teflon coated steel bearing. That's something you can still get from Cat. That's a part number I'll give you here in a minute, but I'll just let you know if you get a hold of me, I might have a source on them, so. And I might be able to do a better price than about anybody. Rollers, secondary. This is a perfect example of what you don't want them to look like. So this guy locked up and got hot. These are all expanded and whopped out and they got a flat spot on them. This is another one I bought Black Diamond Extremes. I bought Factory Cats and I bought Cheapo No Namers on eBay. They have all worked the same for me. So I'll give you that number here in a second and just search however you want. Yeah, so like I said, I haven't tried a, every single brand, but I haven't had to either. I've just found the most cost effective ones for us. Went with that. Yeah, that's the luck I've had. So Chris, thanks for asking. If I didn't give you much, I'm sorry, but hopefully here at the end, me giving you the part numbers will help. Something else I'm gonna include, I'm gonna give you part numbers for the springs. The, the three main springs that we've ever ran into. So secondary, the Articat Green secondary spring. It's, a, I believe, the stiffest one from Factory Cat. We got it in every single one of our secondaries. Good spring. Now, these springs do wear out, so it is good to replace them. I'm not gonna tell you how many miles, after how many miles it's good to replace them. 20 different people will tell me I'm wrong and tell you something different, so I'll let you decide. I just will say is you should replace them once in a while. And it doesn't have to be every year, but they're cheap enough where you could. 30, 40 bucks. Then for primary spring, this is a nice old one that we replaced. As you can see, the paint's all chipping off it, but yellow with a white stripe. You're running pretty much anything 1998 and older, excuse me, 1998 and newer, um, being a nine tower or a six tower, that white or uh, yellow with a white stripe is gonna be your guy. Pretty common part number that'll be good to know for you. Got an old Zert, so of course, with an older girl, I just wanted to touch on this. Most of the older Articats I ran into had the yellow with the green stripe. So if you got like a 96 ZRT or a 96 580 or something like that, you're gonna be looking for uh, yellow with a green stripe. I got it written down as 03 six tower here. All this means is the narrow pin six tower that early six tower I referenced earlier in the video. So your cam arm repair kit, that's your part number that you can use to reference. And then uh, this is the cam arm, the fiber bearing I was talking about that's inside the weight on this style. Um, that's your part number you can use for that. Your 04 six tower, what everyone calls a wide pin. So this is the Still the six tower, but it has a wider pin with the set screw that locks the weight to the uh, cam arm. So there's your cam arm repair kit, your number you can reference. That's just the pin. I found I actually end up with this style repairing or uh, replacing those pins more often than maybe the whole kit. These bearings are the ones that are actually pushed into the movable sheave and then the o-rings i was talking to you that are on the outside that center the weight on the roller versus the o3 style where it's just some washers centering the weight on the roller spider rollers so when you look online you're not going to get a number from articat on these I don't remember exactly how 
I did end up coming across these. I want to say it was probably from Team Arctic performance manuals that I've gotten over the years where I did end up finally finding a number and able to start chasing that down and cross-referencing it. As I mentioned here, so this is the whole kit. I'm searching this and buying this on eBay. I think it was John's Performance is one of the guys I was getting these from. Like I said, SPI, the ones we're using. If you got nine towers, the old school nine towers, that's your part number you're gonna wanna cross reference for the rollers in your spider for those style of clutches. This I believe is the, the narrower style. So if you got an old nine tower where the, the roller is matched to the narrow pin. Now, when you move up to the 036 tower, it's actually gonna use the, uh, the wide pin rollers. It's gonna use this kit number for the narrow pin six towers. So there's a little bit of overlap there. So I showed you what some bad secondary rollers look like. There's your part number for, for the secondary rollers. This is the part number for your Teflon coated steel bearings. Secondary green spring, that's your part number for that green spring I mentioned. Primary springs, your yellow white, that's at 229. Again, pretty common number across a lot of years. And then yellow with the green, the 147. Everyone, thanks for watching. Sorry for a little bit of rambling, but wanted to try to get you as good of info as I could. And I don't write this stuff down before I start talking about it. If you like this, do the usual. Hit the subscribe thing, hit the bell if you want to get notified. You find me on Facebook to get a hold of me for any of this. Also, I am currently and have rebuilt clutches for people. If you got something and you want me to just take care of it, we got race season coming up, so you'll have to be work with me a little bit on the timeline because I got plenty of my own clutches I got to get to, to rebuilding, but I got people sending me clutches in the mail here any day too. To re Again, thanks for watching. Subscribe, throw a comment down. If you didn't like it, I like screwing with you too, so be sure to leave me a comment.